Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer. Welcome. Today is Monday and here on our channel on Mondays we show our Monday makes. So I share with you what I've been working on for the past seven days. I show you what I've been making. Um, I always throw in a little personal update on what's going on with me, what's going on with the channel. I give little hints about what's about to happen during the week. So with that, buckle up. This is usually our longest video of the week. The reason I'm giving you an intro is because there's been an influx of new subscribers. So hi newbies. <laughs> Welcome. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, I'm feeling discombobulated. Like my head is like all over the place. I'm very hyper, very like I'm zipping everywhere. <laughs> I feel so much better than last week. I'm going to say that. I still have sinus issues, um, but again, this is normal for me, especially at this time of year. Um, the past two days, it has been like around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and today it is snowing and it's about 30 degrees. So <laughs> that wreaks havoc on the sinuses and the allergies, you know. I actually slept with the window open, um, not last night, because last night it went from 70 during the day into the 20s. Yeah, it dropped 50 degrees. So the night before that, I slept with the window open, and I woke up, and I was my throat was like kind of, you know, funky. And then I was like, oh, no, I'm getting sick again. And then I was like, wait a minute, I slept with the window open. This always happens when I sleep with the window open. <laughs> so I'm just happy. I'm feeling better. I'm still a little hoarse. <clears throat> still got a little, you get tickle in my throat. But I, I feel better, and I never really got really super sick. And I'm so grateful for that because um, if you follow the chain of who we actually got COVID from, um, it traces back to Lucas's teacher, um, Lowman's teacher. Um, Lowman's in the second grade. And the school was very hush-hush about the teachers who got COVID. <laughs> like, whatever. But we had a meeting with the school, and like we were hinted at that he had COVID. And so he was out for a full week as per CDC guidelines and all that stuff. And then we got an email that he's coming back and then he verified he had COVID. And then that weekend that he was supposed to come back, little man started to get a cough and I, it was the middle of the night. And I was like, ooh, he's got COVID. I could feel it in my guts. Like my mom instincts were kicked on. I was like, we're gonna test him tomorrow. Sure enough. He had COVID and then everyone else in the house got COVID, including Mr. Cinnamon. Mr. Cinnamon had symptoms way before he tested positive though, which is crazy, but none of us got super sick and I'm so thankful for that. Um, but after um, little man quarantining for a week when he got it and then all of us like step laddering quarantining, um, little man came home from school and he said that his teacher is still not there and it's like week three. He was supposed to return, and I don't know if he returned while Lucas was on quarantine or not. I have no idea. I think he did. But then he missed all last week. And so little man came home, and he's all... One of the teachers told me that Mr. Webb's in the hospital. I was like, whoa. Like, we need to make sure he's okay. So we, we have the teacher's phone number. We were texting. We're like, are you okay? He's all... I didn't want the kids to know. They weren't supposed to tell anybody I was in the hospital. He said, I'm I'm recovering. I'm okay. Like, whatever. But, like, still, like, prayers for him because he's a really good person. He's a really good man. He's a really good teacher. So, prayers for little man's teacher. Big prayers. Hopefully he's back to himself soon. <sighs> With that being said, <clears throat> Mr. Cinnamon... Like I said, he was symptomatic way before he actually tested. He took four COVID tests and three of them said he was negative, even though he was coughing and not feeling right. And like he he knew he had COVID, even though all the tests were telling him no. And so his work kept calling him, like asking him symptoms. Cause he works for the government, okay? So the government is very like strict with what's going on with them and they're like they're, they kept calling him and they're like hey this hey this and like they'll question him he's all these are my symptoms i'm still testing negative they're like you still need to stay home <laughs> like just stay home and so i was like all right all right he's gonna stay home and then um he finally tested positive on friday and his work called him 
And they were like, okay, well, you tested positive, but like, what are your symptoms? He's like, I have no more symptoms. I, I feel better, you know. I got a little bit of a cough still, but like, he's always got a cough. Um, they're like, all right, well, you can come back to work. <laughs> so he's going to return to work on Valentine's Day, which is today. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. I love you. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. This heart's just for you. I totally forgot because I'm actually pre I pre record my video, so it's actually Sunday, but. Since you're watching me on Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day to you. All right, so then we got that out of the way. I really do love you guys, though. You guys are awesome. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so <coughs> let's get down to business. I'm totally drinking coffee. I know I'm not supposed to have it, but like, whatever. I fully believe coffee helped me. To keep going. Well, not, not coffee. Caffeine. Did I say coffee? I don't even know what I said. Caffeine helps me to get through the COVID. Because while I wasn't feeling good, I was like pounding the Dr. Peppers. And I specifically like Dr. Pepper cream soda. And the reason I don't drink caffeine is because my heart... I have like a, a really bad reaction with my heart when I drink too much caffeine. But I was pounding them last week just to like... I don't know. I just... I was craving it and craving it and craving it. And today I've only had just this this coffee from Wawa, which can I tell you, Wawa is way better than Starbucks. Starbucks is gross. Mr. Cinnamon got me a Starbucks like a week ago or so. It tasted like hot dog water. It was disgusting. And I was like, I bet these teenagers that are working at Starbucks, like we're in there making TikTok videos, boiling hot dogs and coffee, and then serving it to us. Because that's what it tasted like. It was so nasty. Wawa all the way. So... <laughs> Cheers. That's going to be what my one caffeinated drink today. And then I'm going to try to come back off the caffeine. Which I think is why I've been so like bubbly hyper. So. Let, let me show you what I'm making. Because I, I have projects on both sides of me. I think we're going to start with this. Because it's I have a story to tell behind this. And this is also going to show. Alright so. So, I pulled out some yarn. Now, I have, you guys know, I have lots of yarn behind me. By the way, there are gaps in my yarn. I don't know what's happening. Like, where are you going? Okay. Mr. Son, I'm going to be right back. I don't know where he's going, though. <laughs> We're having uh, snacks today. It's Super Bowl Sunday, but we don't watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> I might tune in for the halftime show if I'm still awake, but um, I, I I like having snacky foods. I like having I like celebrating things with the kids, you know. And so like last minute, I was like, I got twenty dollars. Let's go to Aldi's, and I bought the stuff to make spinach artichoke dip and like a taco dip. Um, the taco dip is very um, American. It is not Mexican at all. <laughs> it's got refried beans. I learned this recipe from one of my best friends in high school's aunt. And then my aunt later on made it in a different way. She like tweaked the recipe. And so it's kind of a mixture of, it's an ant dip. We'll call it an ant dip. It's refried beans, cream cheese, salsa, pepper jack cheese on top, which I usually to do cheddar. And you just heat it till it's all melty and bubbly. And then the spinach artichoke dip is, um, and the taco dip you can put, like when it's done getting hot and bubbly, you can top it with sour cream if you want, or guacamole, or more salsa, or pico de gallo, or cilantro and onion, whatever you want, like whatever. You put meat in there if you want. <laughs> then whatever. Back to the yard. So those are in the oven currently. <laughs> there are caps. There's caps. I know you can't really see them. There was a hole where the purple is, and I had to fill that in with purple that I had just purchased. Well, I didn't just purchase that. I purchased it like two months ago, but I was able to fill in the holes. The red has holes that you kind of can't see. It's like right here, there's holes. The, the bottom shelf has holes. Like, my cakes are getting used. So, with all that being said, like I have all this yarn behind me, but there's two buckets, plastic lidded buckets in my closet in the hallway. Because that hallway closet, I've done the In the Closet series out there. If you haven't seen In the Closet series, 
It's a playlist on my channel. I will link it below. It's funny. It's me trying out weird stuff in the closet. I store my makes in that closet. So when I make things, I put it in the buckets in that closet. But I also have two buckets of yarns that I have had plans to make something with. Or it was yarn that was gifted to me. Or it was like, there's just weird random yarns out there. And so... I was like, I want to get rid of these buckets of yarn. So I've been digging in there and just using yarns. And this yarn was in there. This yarn was gifted to me last year uh, from Sandy at Crochet A Canada. She sent me a surprise um, Christmas advent box. So she, she made me 25 gifts to open for the 25 days leading until Christmas. And I had no idea she was going to do that. And, and she sent me some really amazing, beautiful gifts in there. And this yarn is one of them. Now, this yarn, I have never, ever worked with Hobie yarns. And she sent me some of these Hobie yarns. This is what I have left. Actually, I have two more balls of the blue. But this is what I have left of the, whatever this color is, the purpley, maroony, whatever color this is. This is Hobie Summer Merino, which I looked at their website. They don't have any more, but they do have yarns that are similar to this. I like this yarn a lot. It's 70% cotton, 30% merino. Um, it is, it says it's a number four, but I mean, it's a thin number four, but I treated it as a number four because um, it's got, it's got fluff to it. It almost looks like it's cotton with like merino just kind of on the outside floating. So this is the purpley red color. It's a little bit bleached out from what you're seeing because the light is like really close. And then the blue. Okay. So I was like, okay, I want to make something. I had no idea. This week I've been very, I have no idea what I'm making. I just start crocheting and then what it becomes, it becomes. This is one of those things. The shawl that is on Brunhilda is one of those things that I just started and I had no idea where it was going. I just let the yarn and the hook take me where it was going to go. And I know you guys get frustrated when I show you beautiful things and I don't show you how to make them. But it's kind of like an artist. And I, I'm not at all saying I'm an artist. But that's the only way that I know to describe it. It's like an artist sitting in a canvas and painting a painting and they just let the colors and the brush speak to them. And whatever the painting becomes, it becomes. That is what I've been doing. I can't recreate it because I don't know what I'm doing while I'm doing it. I have no idea what the next stitch is going to be or the next row is going to be. I just go and I let the yarn do what it's going to do. And I know that's frustrating to you guys. And I wish that I could share all of these with you. I wish that I could I could recreate these, but these are like one of a kind things that I just I just go and I just do. Now this one I started off. I think I started on this end. <laughs> it's a long shawl, so bear with me. It's not gonna all fit on camera. I started off on this end, and it started off being, I was like, it's going to kind of be an asymmetrical shawls, but I don't like asymmetrical shawls. The ones where it's just a triangle, I don't like that. So, and then I was like, okay, well, I don't want it all to be one stitch. So then I started doing it in different stitches. This needs to be blocked because it is, is a little bit wonky. So I started off with double crochets, and then I did, I switched colors, and I made shell stitch. But I, it's not full shell stitch. Like I just, like I said, every row became its own thing. And then I did, I think this is the moss stitch. And then I did just like a mesh stitch. And then I did, I don't remember what this stitch is called, but it's the one where you crisscross them. And then I did the center section, granny. And then I started to decrease on this side. <laughs> But my decreases were like, like I said, I was not counting. I was not measuring. I was not writing a pattern. Nothing was perfect. So when I started working this side, it was, I was decreasing way more than I was supposed to. So it was coming out like the wrong dimensions. Perfectly fine. And then I did, I think these are half doubles. 
I don't know what stitch this is. Split shells, I think. Yeah, those are split shells. Um, I think this is double, half, double, double, half, double. So a row, double, row, half, double. And then double crochets. And like I said, it was not even at this point. So one side was bigger than the other. So I did a section along the edging of granny square. Yeah, granny stitches. So this is what this shawl looks like. <laughs> Try to back it up as far as I can. It's on my face. Right. I think it is beautiful and I think it is unique. And the way that you wear that, I mean, you could wear this over your shoulders. You absolutely could. You could wear it like that with like a little dress. Keep your little shoulders warm, whatever. But you can also wear it like this, which is kind of the intended way to wear this style. Here you go. That's my first shawl made with Hobie yarn. Never worked with Hobie yarn before. Like I said, I fell in love. I feel like I'm far away. I fell in love with this. I fell in love with this yarn and I have not weaved my ends in, but it's fine. Um, I really like this shawl. I like the yarn. It's got beautiful, beautiful stitch definition. So I literally put the last stitch in this. I put it in its project bag and I went to bed and I was thinking I would really like to work with some more Hobie yarns. And the next morning I woke up and I had an email from Hobie. <laughs> it was like the universe is aligned. It was perfect timing. And I was asked if I would like to um, work with them to show off some of their yarns. And I was like, totally, totally, yes. <laughs> so um, the order has already been shipped out. It is coming all the way from, I think the last... The shipping thing said Copenhagen, which is fantastic. And I got to pick out the yarns I used, or I want to use. I picked out five different yarns. They have very specific rules on what I have to put in the video. And it's going to be a paid promotional thing, which I mean, you guys already know. I've done these videos before, but uh, Hobie has some, a lot of rules. So it's going to have some like commercial technology feel to it. But because of that, and because that is a very much paid promotional thing, I do not ever lie in my 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 review, so that's not going to happen ever. Um, I'm going to give you guys an honest review. They know that. It's part of the agreement. Be honest. I'm going to do that. But they just want me to work up like swatches and samples and like, you know, that's all fine and good and well. And because I was doing the paid promotion one, I also placed an order with my money, purchased yarn with... I never told them I was doing it so that I can give you guys a more cinnamon stitches style review on some yarns that I wanted to do. Because what they did is they gave me a list, okay? They gave me a list of these, these bougie fancy yarns, which they're beautiful. I cannot wait to show you guys what they are, okay? I haven't got them yet, so I haven't touched them, feels them, squeezed them yet, but like, I cannot wait to work with these yarns. But then I went on the website and I was like, okay, now what, what do I really want to work with? What are my people going to want to see? So I placed an order of that as well. You know, like maybe some, some budget style yarns and like some cool stuff like that. So that is going to come up whenever those orders come in. Um, hopefully this week, it'll be the end of the week. I mean, that would be a really good Friday video. Uh, if not, it will be next week. So whenever, I don't know how long it's going to take to get here from, from Denmark. So we'll see. So love this shawl. I love the Hobie yarn. I really love this Hobie yarn. I And I, I'm thankful that Sandy sent this to me because I was excited when she sent it to me because she can't work with like wool yarns at all. She's completely allergic. So I was like, hey, she's got beautiful yarn. She's sharing with me that's so it's, It was exciting. And I stored them in the closet because they're, I've never used Hobie yarns. I wanted it to be just the right project. And I feel like this really, really came out just exactly like what it was meant to be. And I do have two more skeins of the denim color. I don't know what the colorways are on this. 
Okay, so I think the red one is color nine and the blue, no, the blue one's color nine and the red one's color 10. It doesn't matter because they don't have this yarn on the website anymore, but <laughs> love this. And it's not the, um, even though it's mostly cotton, it doesn't work up like cotton at all. It works up like a very nice wool. And even though there's wool in it, it's not itchy, scratchy. Like, it's just a really good feeling yarn. I really, really, really like that yarn. And then after that, I was like, okay, well, let's get some more bougie yarns out. Let's get some more fancy yarns out. I purchased this from Michigan Fine Yarns in Livonia, Michigan. I purchased this yarn when I made my order for my coffee bean yarn, which is behind here now because I pulled it, I put it in a bucket and I put it in there. Um, I also ordered a skein of the Stella Jack or Stella Jacques Adrafil. Um, this says that it is made in Italy. It is 100% superwash merino wool. Not merino, it just says superwash. It's a 100 gram ball. Air and weight. The color is 84, maybe. It says color lot, that, that. Whatever that is. Um, it's a small ball. And I knew I only had enough to make a hat, a knit hat at that. And sure enough, it made just one knit hat. <laughs> but this hat is so pretty. I was working up these colorways and I was like, okay, these colors are my childhood. Because these are very much like late 70s, early 80s. I was born in 79. But these reminded me of my childhood. Like so much. These colors are just... This yarn is gorgeous. It's not the softest like it feels like wool but it didn't bother me working it up it didn't bother me at all knitting it wow my hair looks really like reddish that was weird okay so i think this this yarn is just stunning beautiful and i really 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 like this and this is another hat that's going to i'm actually going to go through my hat basket because i have way too many hats and i keep making more but this hat fits everybody in the family and it's um, kind of gender neutral. So like I could wear it, Mr. Cinnamon could wear it, little man could wear it. So it's just, I just, this yarn, just the colors. Like the whole time I was working with it, I never knew what was gonna happen next. Cause it just kept changing. So pretty, so pretty. And it feels really nice worked up. Like it feels wooly. It's a little itchy, but it doesn't bother my face around my face at all. I just think that's so beautiful. And this is just a very simple, it's not even a pattern at this point. Like I just make hats and then I just go. What I do when I make my knit hats and I, I think I changed up the brim because usually I do a two by two rib. So two knits, two pearls, two knits, two pearls. I think this one I did two knits and three pearls because I just wanted it to look a little different. So two knits, three pearls, two knits, three pearls. And then you just work in the round. I've been, I've been kind of doing my own thing, my own measurements, because I was doing the Ross hat pattern from um, Ross at Smell Great Guy, or SmellsLikeYarn.com. I was using his hat pattern for a long time, but a lot of the hats were just coming out a little bit too big. And I don't know if it's the pattern or if it's the way that I knit, because I tend to knit pretty loose. And so I started just doing my own numbers. So what I do is, I I've, I think with this one, I think I did 72. I cast on 72, I think. But the way you have to do it is, if you're going to cast on a number, you need to be able to divide it by. So if you're doing a 2 by 2 rib, you need that number to divide equally by 4. And if you're doing a 3 by 2 rib, where this, or the two by three, whatever, you need it to divide by five equally. And so because I, it's divisible by five here, 72 is not divisible by five. Maybe I did 70. I think I did 70. So anyway, you need it to divide by whatever that number is. If it's two by two, you need it to divide by four. If it's three by three, you need it to divide by six. And then you can take that same number when you're dividing to to decrease 
when you're decreasing, whatever that number you divided by here, you can divide by here. And so you'll have five. I had five, a multiple of five here, so I have five decrease points at the top of the hat. If you do a three by three, that number is going to be six, and you'll have six decreases. If you do a number, a two by two, and it's a number by four, you can do four decreases or you can do six, or eight decreases. Like whatever, whatever works. But yeah, so that's my hat. Then, <clears throat> I was like, all right, what do I want to do now? I felt very successful after doing those two projects. So I went on my shelf, and I was like, I want to work some of these cakes down. I want to get rid of some of the cakes. This is a very long project. I want to get rid of some of the cakes. So I went in there, I was like, okay, what yarn, what yarn, what yarn? So I picked up this. I think I have the label. Yes, I do. So this is the Roll With It Tweed. This is in the color neon. And I have neon and I have... I used two colorways. Crayons. So... This is, a, again, a number four. Medium number four. Um, I think it's just 100% acrylic. Yeah, 100% acrylic. Each cake is 296 yards. I used just shy of three cakes. And the reason I used just shy of three cakes is because there was huge sections of the cake that looked like Halloween colors. Which I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> I didn't want it to be Halloween colored. So, this first part is the neon colorway of the, the what did I say it was? Just Roll With It Tweed. Is that what I said? Roll With It Tweed by Red Heart. This is the neon colorway, this section of it. And then I moved into the crayon colorway. <laughs> very rainbow, very rainbow. And then I finished it with another cake of the neon. This is the Just Feel Festive shawl from Kalisha at the Quirky Monday Craft Cast. I will link her below. I think that's right. Also, she has the, pat the pattern for this shawl on her Etsy. Not her Etsy. Is it her Etsy? Ravelry? For $1. Pattern's $1. And if you have problems following her pattern, Zelda from... Or Z. I don't call her Zelda. Z from Zelda and NRJ, wow, NRJ3 <laughs> did a, um, a quick little tutorial that was not exactly the pattern. Uh, I didn't do exactly the pattern either. I changed it up and I'll talk about that in a minute. But she did a, uh, a little swatch of how to do the pattern because there was a few things that people were like having a problem with when the pattern first released. The pattern is super, super easy. Don't be scared of it. But I did change a few things. So this is a shawl that has worked on the bias. You start off. This was my first row. You just make a row. And then you increase on one side and decrease on the other side. And it creates a, a diagonal. This is super, super long. <laughs> Is way too long to show you on camera it is see my wingspan is five foot nine and it is easily two feet longer than my wingspan so I'm gonna say this is probably almost eight feet <laughs> and I love this pattern this pattern was so much fun the thing that I did different because I did not purchase the pattern I followed the tutorial and then I just went off my own thing um, the thing that I did different from the pattern, the original pattern was the starting cast on was a, or the starting, the starting chain was a multiple of three, I believe, or I think it was a multiple of three. And every three stitches, they put a granny, a granny stitch, chain one granny stitch. So instead of doing that, because that's technically four stitches, it curled. So the first row curled on itself, which is the way the pattern was written. It is fine. I wanted, I didn't want that. I didn't want to have to fight it. So I frogged it after I did that part. And then I just did a multiple of four. And then I did 
every fourth stitch, I put a granny stitch, chain one, granny stitch, chain one. And then the next row, you increase on this side, you decrease on this side. It's really easy. It was a lot of fun. This worked up so fast. I mean, this is an eight foot shawl and it took me less than 24 hours to finish it. And it wasn't, I wasn't like crocheting 24 hours straight. And this, when you, when you decrease on one side, it tends to want to curl the edges a little bit. So it does want to curl a little bit, which blocking would fix. But I'm not worried about that at all. So you can, again, wear this over your shoulders. Over your shoulders. You got your cute little rainbow going on. It's very long. You can wrap it up in the front if you want. You can wear it any way you want. You can throw it over your shoulder. You'd be like extra fancy, you know? <laughs> or you can wear it like the other shawl I made. And you can wear it around your neck like this. I recommend if you're going to wear it this way to do it in a lightweight yarn. Um, a three or thinner. This is a worsted weight yarn. So this is a little bit extra. I mean, if you want extra bulk, you make it in a four. That's fine. But for me to wear it like this, because I live in a warmer climate, and even today at 30 degrees, I didn't wear a coat outside. So <laughs> I would recommend if you're going to wear it like this, make it in a lighter weight yarn, unless you want the bulk around you. But I, this made me so happy. This was so much fun to make. It was so quick and so easy. And it's like another beautiful rainbow that makes me happy. So totally, totally recommend this pattern. Um, very, very, very easy to follow. Like I said, that was just the roll with it tweed. And so I had, I had some left over. But like I said, there was two different colorways. Um, the crayon and the neon had sections where it was like just orange and black. And I was like, okay, that is, that's Halloween. <laughs> that's not what I'm looking for. I don't want big. And then between when I was going from, let me see if I can find the spot. When I was going from the crayon to the neon, which is right here, the blue is the last of the crayon and then it goes into the neon. It was like orange and orange and orange. So there was like a bunch of orange in here. And actually, I think it was past this blue is when it faded into this this Halloween crap. And then the whole first section of the neon was Halloween. The It was almost the same colors. And so I was like, okay, well, I cut part of this and I cut part of that because I that's a lot of orange. I mean, you guys see the stripes are like a certain thickness. If it would have been just more and more orange there, it would have been just too much orange. So I cut a bunch of the orange out so that that piece is not too big. Because see, like the, the stripes are all pretty even. I just didn't want a huge section of orange. Look at how beautiful that rainbow is. It's so pretty. So. <laughs> it's so pretty. So I had this left over, which I still do. I was like, all right, I'm going to make a hat. And so I started off with top-down hat. I told you guys, I am not good at top-down crochet hats. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not good at crochet hats. They either, if I try them top-down, they end up looking like a bucket or something. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And it's probably because I've never followed a top-down pattern. So that is probably part of the issue. And then when I make it, brim up a lot of times it's pyramidy because the way I decrease and I have followed patterns and there's only a handful of hat patterns that have not looked like a pyramid on top of my head so with that being said I tried a top down hat pattern and it didn't work out so now it's a little basket because <laughs> it didn't work out <laughs> so anyway it, it's a fine basket I did like this real pretty design on the bottom so it sits completely fat flat and it stands up on its own but there are there's labels in there right now because I was trying to hold the label so I could remember the yarn when I showed you guys the stuff but this is some of the yarn you see what I mean by this is very Halloweeny it's very Halloweeny and like this whole ball is like this oranges and blacks and yellows and this only had this little bit of blue so I just made a little basket this is going to sit on my desk and it's going to hold my yarn labels for Monday Make Videos. So, and I might leave, 
I might leave the the outer wrapper in there because let me show you. See, there's nothing in there. It still stands up on its own. Perfectly fine. And this is not double held together. It's just, I just basically made a hat with a flat top. I mean, it could be a like little fez. <laughs> Thank you, hat. <laughs> anyway, it was a fine basket. And it holds my yarn balls. It holds my labels just fine. But I like that, that label in there just to give it a little extra support around the edge. Not that it needs it. And that holds my label, so it's going to stay on my desk. My little scrap balls like this can go in there until I have time to ball them up and put them in my big scrap bin. So that's what I did with the leftover yarn from that beautiful Feel Fest, Just Feel Festive shawl. Highly recommend that pattern. If you want to work on something, I mean, this took up almost three cakes. And I could have made it wider this way. I could have. And I, I think if I'm going to make another one of these, I'm definitely going to make it wider. So it definitely will take up three cakes, which I'm probably going to make some more of these because I really enjoyed this. I mean, so much. It's beautiful. And I love, I love it with the self-striping yarns. It's just beautiful. And it worked up fast and it was it was fun. Give you guys an idea of the full spectrum of colors. <laughs> it's so pretty. So pretty. Who doesn't want to be wrapped in a rainbow? Especially on a gloomy day like today? Forget about it. Yeah. Wrap myself up in a rainbow. Totally wore my rainbow cowl, which I think fell on the floor. It was on the back of my chair. My rainbow cowl. I totally wore that out today because my neck was cold. There. There we go. Beautiful. So that's what I have made in the past seven days. I'm also going to give you a sneak preview. This is also not going to be a pattern because I'm struggling with this so bad. I'm struggling. I was going to make this a pattern. I was like, nope, this is giving me problems. I'm working on like a little t-shirt style, a little shirt for myself. But it's giving me problems and I don't like the way it's turning out. So this will be something that I wear, but it is not going to be a pattern unless I can perfect it. But I wanted something kind of uh, Mexican style, you know. And I think the, the, the cut of this is Mexican style. But I'm struggling with the pattern, so it's not going to be a pattern. I'm not even positive I'm going to finish it. But <laughs> if I do, you'll see it next week. So, for this week, what we have coming up is we do have Tuesday tea coming up. I have not picked the tea for that yet. But I have lots to choose from. I cut my finger. Ow. Um, what else? What else? What else? I have a Premier Yarns haul to show you guys. I have a little bit of Happy Mail that I actually went and I got to go pick up, um, which made me so excited. And then um, we're going to play the rest of the week by ear because I have no idea what's happening. It all depends on if the Hobie orders come. Oh, and I bought a skein of yarn from Michael's. We're going to do another Michael's yarn review. Um, but my juju, see, this is what we do in this family. We all have our own Michaels account so that we have a higher chance of getting a 40% off coupon because every once in a while I'll get a 40% off coupon or Juju will get one in her account or Mr. Cinnamon will get one. And when we, when me and Mr. Cinnamon buy stuff, we put it on Mr. Cinnamon's account because it builds up the rewards. But I have one in case I have an extra coupon or I need an extra coupon or for whatever reasons. And then Juju has her own account that she uses for her own purchases because, you know, she's a business owner. She's got her own money. <laughs> So I was like, all right, everybody open your apps because I really want this one skein of yarn. Just one. I just want to try it. It's beautiful. And I was not willing to pay $11.99 for it. So Juju's all, I got a 40% off coupon. I said, can I use it? She said, yep. I was like, thank you. <laughs> and so because I used her coupon, I bought her like three packs of stickers, but it was fine. It's good. It's all good. $3 to save me, 40%. I'll take it. You know. 
you know. So with that, we will sh we will do a review on that yarn sometime later this week as well. I need to write that in my planner because that is that is that's a video plan. I'm doing really good with the plan and stuff. Look at and it's pretty. Let me show you. This is our week. We're all decorated for Valentine's Day. I don't think there's anything personal that you guys can't see, but let's see we got Valentine's decorations. It's so pretty. Having a lot of fun working with my planner. I put the stickers in, and then when I'm done with the week, let me check this one too. When I'm done and there's extra space towards the end of the week, usually I add extra stickers and I make it extra like pretty for myself. So my reward at the end of the week for working hard is putting stickers in my planner. That's my reward. <laughs> and I totally love it. I totally love it. I'm having so much fun with that. So, all right, guys. I am going to wrap myself in a rainbow. And I will let you guys go about your business. About your day. I'm totally looking at myself like, hey, I look cute. Let you go about your day, about your business. And um, thank you so much for joining me today on this very long video on Monday Makes. And I have, I'm so looking forward to this week's videos. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I am also planning a premiere week. If you don't know what premiere week is, Premiere Yarns is my favorite yarn company. And we are going to feature a full week of premiere yarns. It's probably going to be in March, though, because I have a lot of planning to do to create a premiere week. But it's a lot of fun. And um, I just, I got this, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So happy. And I'm going to let you guys go. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.